Okay, we're walking out here past the fire pit. This is way out in front of the house. And we're walking up to this tree and look at that. This is Ben's weather project that we put together. So, all right, just wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Okay, red, green, and should get another green here. Come on, green, green. Okay, red minutes that came came on. Green, first green meant meant that it got a good read, and the second green mean that means that it uh, sent it to the internet. Okay, so what we got here is a BME. It's that Bosch BME 280 up in there. You can see the little square thing right there is the sensor. Okay, and inside of here we've got an uh, ESP 8266. It's got um, an IPEX connector instead of a built-in antenna. So we've got this big or this tall external antenna there. And then we just put these two LEDs on here. So what happens with this thing is that it's basically sleeping all the time. So it sleeps for 10 minutes, then it comes on, it uh, flashes that red LED, then it fires this thing up, puts power to it, it uh, takes three or four readings, and then once it gets a good last reading and the measurements are good, then it flashes this green LED, and then the SP86 or 8266 uh, connects to my router and using Wi-Fi so that with this antenna the Wi-Fi reaches out here and then it puts it up on a server so there's a CGI script running on a server on DigitalOcean and it loads it up to the uh, server puts it into a database up there and then we can um, get on the web and look at the results that we're collecting. So we've been collecting for about three days now. Anyway, so and then it goes back to sleep. So it goes into deep sleep, and then it gets reset again in 10 minutes. It comes on and does it again. In the bottom right in here, right across here, is a, what is that called? It's a 123A lithium battery. And so... Let me show you, uh, let's jump back a few days uh, to the building. Okay, here we are in the experimental mode. So we've been running this thing, just sitting outside, taking measurements for a couple of days. Everything looks pretty good, so we're going to take it out of its experimental cup. and go ahead and put it into this case over here. Alright, so if I hit the reset, we ought to get to see the... Yep, there it just came on. It just did a good reading. It's trying to connect. And if we get a green... up oh, there we go. We just connected. So we connected up, loaded our data up to the cloud, and we're good to go. Alright, so let's deconstruct this thing. So the first thing off is the battery. This is just a 123A lithium battery, 3.3 volts. They say 3 volts, but I think they're a little higher than that, 3.1, something like that. So that's enough to run. Got a lot of amperage. It'll last a long time. Remember, this thing is only coming on every 10 minutes. Otherwise, it's in sleep mode. So it's just using a couple of seconds every 10 minutes. And these uh, leads are just gently soldered on. So you just uh, put a dab of solder on both ends. Then you tin your wires and you can just touch it, uh, touch it together, put solder and iron on it, and it will connect up enough to hold that. So that's what we got there. All right, let's look here. Let's just take this IPEX con connector off. So this is just set up so we can have an external antenna instead of, instead of having the antenna on the on the chip itself. Okay. 
Now we are running this in sleep mode and we're using this uh, ESP8266 board. So we have to connect pin 16 to the reset pin. Pin 16 is connected to the clock and when the alarm goes off, then it sends a signal to reset. Okay, so that's what that jumper is. Okay, and then we've got our two LEDs. We just have them jump to pin, uh, I think the green is on 12, the red is on 13. Okay, so let's just, and then they're also connected to uh, the positive. So they ground to turn on. And then I just have uh, the LED, I got the, let's see, this is a yellow, purple, brown. So that's a 470 ohm resistor. I have it soldered onto the anode of the LED. And then I've kind of put a joggle in the pins and that makes them where they will fit tightly in there. Makes a good connection right there. Okay, so we can just plug them into these DuPont connectors. Okay, so that's that. And then here's the BME 280. And it's just connected. Now here's the positive. And then this is the negative of the BME, but we're not connecting it to ground. We're actually connecting, connecting it to an output pin. That way we can turn this thing on and off. Because when we're in sleep mode, we don't want this thing running and using power. We want it just to be off. So we use this pin to turn it on and then turn it off again. And then here's our data and uh, clock lines right there. Okay, so that's what we got there. And so here's, this is just an old uh, ESP8266. We soldered the headers on there. The only thing we did extra was I, we needed some extra positive pins and we needed some extra uh, negatives. So what I did was just glue a three pin header onto the side of that header. And if you look right there, you can see I just connected it to the ground pin and ran it down those pins right there. Same thing over here, glued on a three pin header. I connected it to the 3.3 pin and ran it down there. So we can use either of these for extra pins. Okay, now we've got this so this just is all going to go into the case. So for the case, we have this nice little waterproof case. It comes with a rubber seal. It goes around the outside. So when we screw this all together, it should be waterproof other than these holes we drilled in it. Okay. So on the front, now if we look at the BME 280, whoops you'll see that, you know, normally headers have that little black plastic spacer. I've taken that off. So this will fit through here. Okay. And we're going to glue that into place with super glue. We're going to seal all the electronics with super glue that are on the outside, except for that in the corner there. That's the actual BME 280. And you probably can't see it on the camera, but there's a tiny little hole right in the top of it. We have to protect that hole because that's where it reads pressure and humidity from that hole. So we have to keep that protected. We don't want that to get glue on it and we don't want it to get direct moisture on it. Okay, so we'll put this in here. We'll seal it up with glue around the edges. We'll seal up all the electronics. So they're not affected by the moisture and that sort of thing outside. We just have to protect the BME 280 itself. Okay. And then once that's sealed up, then we'll be able to put this uh, plug into the header on the back like that. Okay. And then this is a piece of PVC pipe that I cut. And we'll put it on here like this. And that will... I also have a longer one, so I might use that one. But anyway, one of these we'll put on there and we'll glue that in place. And so that will protect it from rain getting directly on it. We may put a piece of screen over this 
to keep insects from getting in there. Okay, so that'll be that. And then these are three millimeter holes and they will accept these LEDs, which we'll put in there and glue into place. Okay, so that's what the top looks like. And then here's the case itself. So what we are gonna do so we're gonna have that battery sitting in there. I've got a lot of little pieces of double stick tape. So we'll just set the battery in there and then we'll use double stick tape and we're just gonna stick that right on the back, back there, okay? And then we've drilled a hole in the top of here and it will accept this antenna. We'll have to coil the wire up and connect it right there. And then I think that even though the DuPont connectors will stick off of here a little ways, I think that this case is thick enough that when we close it all down, we can get everything out of the way and close it down, put some screws in there. We'll be all sealed up. LEDs, sensor right there. We'll be good to go. All right, so I'm gonna go do that and then we'll get back to you. Okay, so it's built seems to be working. We've been collecting data for a couple of days. Uh, I'll be interested to see how well this battery lasts. It should last a long, long time though. And then I'll be interested to see how well that BME 280 lasts, uh, being out in the weather like this. So it should be on the back of this tree with, uh, with that little bit of thing. It should be okay. I might put a piece of screen across here or something to keep out a little bit of dust. But other than that, I think we're just going to let it sit there um, collecting data for Ben's project. All right, let's, let's go have a look at what we've got on the web so far. All right, let's pop open a browser and we'll go to Simple Design. Simple design, front slash bin, front slash CGI bin, front slash current dot py. Current weather. And there we go. All right, let me zoom in just a little bit. There we go. Okay, so what's happening is every time the uh, ESP8266 comes out of sleep, it gets a reading, and then it connects to my Wi-Fi, and it sends the, the data to this server, to a CGI script, that um, this is on DigitalOcean up in New York. So it sends it to the CGI script, and that loads it into a database, and we just collect that data there. So every 10 minutes, which is you know 106 times an hour, 144 times a day um, it's collecting that and we've collected four days worth uh, since we had this thing going uh, so anyway it, it goes up there it's being saved and then when you call this script current.py it just pulls the last week's worth of data we don't have a week's but it pulls the last out and shows you the current stuff so this this ran at 830 was the last time that it made a measurement it was 83 degrees 64 percent relative humidity and holding pretty steady at 29.99 inches of mercury which we've been there for the last almost two weeks i think okay and then um, we've got uh, a temperature history so here's the four days that we have up to the current and here's our relative humidity and because we really are having essentially no weather the relative humidity and temperature are just the inverse of each other. You know, warmer air holds more water, cooler air holds less water, so they're just working in, in opposites. Okay, 
and then the barometric pressure zoom back into there is like I said it's holding pretty steady at 30 now when you get the reading from the BME 280 it's going to be in the actual you know ambient air pressure and you've got to convert that so we're at 720 feet elevation so you've got to convert that to sea level elevation uh, so there's a formula that you can use it's pretty common that you can find to do that but if you don't do that then you'll be reading your local pressure instead of your the uh, uh, sea level pressure and that's what the weather service uses so if you want yours to match up with the weather service then you've got to adjust it to get it to uh, sea level pressure instead of your local pressure okay but that's about it so we've got four days we're going to keep on collecting and uh, have more and more data and this will display we got it set up to display a week I mean we could display more but that's as far as we've as far as we've gone with it so far okay that is just about it